Alongside Kevin Kilban and Julian de Guzman, Canada will face Japan in Niigata in the middle of October. So, Jules, when you take a look at that roster, what are you expecting out of this camp? Yeah, I mean, obviously a, a new coach, and I think that's going to be uh, refreshing for a lot of these guys. Uh, at the same time, I think this is an opportunity now for Canada to get a friendly match. They missed the last window, missing those two games, and now they're getting their first friendly match. This is going to be a, a big, important match for them because it's a, against a big squad, right? So it's a big test for a lot of these guys. And I think, you know, post-World Cup, I think it's, you know, it's a matter of these guys now just getting that confidence again. You know, I think we've seen them in the Gold Cup and the Nations League. They haven't really performed to their, to their standards. Um, but I think the big challenge, though, though, Kev, is a lot of these players, Kyle Lair and Jonathan David, they haven't been to their you know, standards as well at their club level. So coming into a national team group with new coaches and the message from Mauro Biello, it's going to be more about playing for your country. It's about playing for your country, wearing the badge, and, and just putting out a performance for this group. And then one of the positives I've heard is the fact that Alfonso Davies is playing his position, right? So yeah. we've seen him bounce around the it's field. the first thing Biello said. He's going to put mm. him on the left side, one of the best left, left side of players in the world. And I think that's how it should have been a long time ago, right? So now it's looking more like what we could expect and what we should expect for this uh, game against Japan in terms of the players playing their roles, playing uh, their systems but now putting a performance against a very strong team like Japan. Yeah, a, a strong side is right. One of the best top 20 side in the world uh, right now. But aside of that, I think Canada have got to concentrate more on, on where they're going to be probably three and four years down the line now. And this is the start of it, Julian. Yeah. You, can't, you can't not think that this is such a huge game for Canada because of the lack of competitive games that they're going to have. Obviously, we're looking at the tournament down the line, but the lack of real comp competitive games they're going to have going into the World Cup in, uh, in, in three or four years' time. That's where we have to be looking at this Canada Canada side now and judging them. As you say, Biello is saying, look, we're going to see the real Canada. Alfon uh, Alfonso Davies in his more natural position. I, I, I think that is a great thing for Canada. I think it's a real good thing for the, for the team going forward. The, the lack of form doesn't worry me as much, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, Julian, because I, I, and you and I would have witnessed this, so many players not necessarily getting game time at the club, not necessarily in form, they should be able to raise themselves in the play for the country. Yep, That's yep. something that I'm sure that Biela will be talking to the players when. So when to back. that point, we talk about the players, and we know the players who are going to be here. There are some notable introductions, like Harry Patton as well. We want to see what he is going to do. But this is on Mario Biello, and when speaking to him this week when he had his general media conference call, I asked him, do you consider this a job interview? And he said yes. And Kev, mm. what he talked specifically about changing patterns of thinking, about being honest with a roster that's full of guys who are playing in the Champions League. So how much of a test is this for Mauro Biel? Mm. I think be being honest is the, 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 uh, the real word that you've got to use about this. I, I, you can't mess around with established players now. These guys... Under John Herbman, they were just looking to establish the career. They were just getting up and running. They are fully established, top-class uh, players with top-class European uh, clubs right now. They are top-class internationals, so you can't, you can't mess around with these no, guys' mentality, no. Julian, or, no. or personality. You've got to be honest with them. You have to be honest in where you're going to play them. You've got to be straightforward with them. They'll, they'll appreciate that. It, it might not necessarily always be what they, they've got at the club level in terms of you know preparation. That might not always be on the case. And, and the players will know that going into the camps. But if you're honest with them, if you're direct with them, and if you tell them what's expected of them going into every game, the players will respond to that sort of, uh, of uh, personality that's put in front of them. Do not, under yeah. any circumstances, give them the BS, give them the lies, the, because the players see through that clearly. And, is, and, to, and when, you're, when you talk about that and seeing through the lies, does it mean something that... Mauro Biello played for Canada. That he can walk in there and he understands what it means. And that's not, this is not to be disparaging John Herman at all, but it's a different kind of messaging. Herman's coming in and saying, play for the guys around you. But Biello can maybe, Julian, talk about having pride in the shirt. Yeah, and there's a different way as a player receiving information from a coach who's played the game, right? And, and I mean, we're going to use a, a, a big you know, name and a big standard like Leo Scaloni, who played for Argentina, play professionally, there's a way those players receive him. And I think that's going to be so important now, seeing a guy like Mauro Biello who's played the game. Co there's coaches on that coaching staff who has also played the game. That's going to be a big difference in, in terms of what this camp could look like for a lot of these guys who are currently playing for their clubs. As a former player myself, and, and I, I, I know I've been involved with coaches who have played the game, there's a, there's a different way you, you, you go into these uh, meetings. And I don't think they're going to have... Uh, a ton of meetings as well. You don't need a ton of meetings to, to buy or sell something to these players. It's all about football at this point. It's all about playing for your country. You keep it very simple. You let these guys do the big travel that they have to do. But when they arrive, Kev, they're, they're mm. there to play football. Yeah, exactly. And also, I mean, there's too much of the narrative for the last two years around 
Canada Soccer has been around uh, payments both to, to the male and female players. I think that has got to be something now that's got to be put by the wayside. It has to go now. Now, yeah. I know I know that the players feel in, in past, yourself included, you have to speak to your players, have felt that they've not been treated fairly in terms of preparation, aside of match fees and all these sort of things. Equal pay as well, of course, that's been a matter for, for, for the female side of it. In my opinion, you don't get rich playing international football. Yeah, it's yeah. about playing for the jersey. It's about the pride in what you can do on going onto the field. You're not always going to have a good game, but what can you do to affect the game, even if you're not playing well? And that's what I'm saying. The narrative around this side has been too much off the field. It's about what you do on the field now. Get the results, get the performances more than anything, I would say. That's what's imperative for Canada ahead of uh, the World Cup. Yeah, a lot of these new faces that are coming to this camp as well. This is what it should be about. You know, it shouldn't be about politics. It shouldn't be about the business side of the game. It's about football. So a lot of these new faces we're seeing and even seeing a guy like Matthew Chouinier getting that call up, I think it's important for these guys to be welcome to this environment, you know, what, and be understanding of what representing your country is all about. And that's what this is about for these guys. This is what this camp's going to be about. And I think, again, it's a fresh voice. Players, that, you know, after a few years being under one, one management, one coach, they're going to always need a new voice. And I'm pretty sure it will, it will uh, you know, heighten their, their standard of play compared to what we've seen, you know, most recent uh, in re recent matches. Yeah. And there's a big reason why they need to perform is because of the uh, chances of playing in uh, Copa America. That's yeah. a f that's a fresh voice with a lot of urgency because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Julian, just oh, just over a month after they will face Japan in Japan, Canada will have that quarterfinal, which is a playoff for the Copa America. That first leg is mid-November. Three days later, they will play the return leg. There's a lot on the line for Canada coming up.